Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Those who are watching on Facebook, thanks for joining us. I'm Jody Hansen. I am the Communications Director for Johnson County Government. Today, we're going to hear from Dr. Sami Ariola, who is the Director of Johnson County Department of Health and Environment. We're also going to hear from Elizabeth Holshu, who is the Director of Epidemiology. Uh, so before we get to them and have them share some very important information about uh, phase two of Johnson County vaccination program. I just wanted to do a few housekeeping items. So thanks to the media who have signed on and are participating in this news conference virtually. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and let um, Dr. Ariola and Elizabeth give the presentation, but go ahead and put your questions in the Q&A feature. And so the plan is once they get through their presentation, I'll start selecting questions and I'll choose one and I'll ask that member of the media to uh, go ahead and ask their question over, over the Zoom tool. There might be just a second delay while we unmute you, but uh, hopefully this will work well. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, turn the microphone over to Dr. Ariola. Good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Sami Ariola, the Director for the uh, Department of Health and Environment. Thank you for joining us today. We are entering a very encouraging, yet challenging time with our ongoing battle with COVID-19. Encouraging because we now have uh, very effective vaccines to help us all move closer to defeating the virus and returning to a more normal life. <laughs> Members of public health here in Johnson County, as, as well as uh, across the Metro, have been working uh, diligently. We are already getting shots into the arms of our residents, and that's our ultimate goal. The challenging part, of course, is that we do not have enough vaccines yet to meet the demand. Of course, we are uh, very grateful and happy that a lot of our residents are interested in taking the vaccine. We don't have enough, now, enough vaccines now, but we will. Right now, we are distributing the vaccine as quickly as we can once we receive them. We are ready with plans in place to distribute higher numbers of vaccines when they arrive. We are all aware that time is of the essence and people at every level, from the federal to state to county, are doing all that we can to get more vaccines through the door. To that end, we can make sure we are communicating with you and that you are as informed as possible. Today, I want to let you know where we are in the vaccination process, how you can stay up to date and answer your questions as best as we can in the time we have together today. We're all in this together. We're here to help. Again, as uh, uh, Jody mentioned, I am here with our Director of Epidemiology, Elizabeth Holshu. Next, next slide. Uh, Johnson County will be ready to move to, into phase two next week. Um, uh, again, um, uh, to be clear, we still have a few healthcare workers in phase one that we still need to vaccinate. So we, we will be doing those concurrently. Uh, in, in reference to the phases, those decisions are made by KDHE. They are made at the state level. Who is in phase one? or phase two is not determined by us, it's determined by, the, by KDHE. And the decision to move from one phase to another, in this case from phase one to phase two, is made at the state level. Next slide. And these are the different phases. In the first phase, we have healthcare workers. We have residents of our long-term care facilities as well as those independent living uh, that are affiliated with our long-term care facilities and workers that are critical to pandemic response continuity. And so the uh, vaccination of the long-term care facilities is occurring through the National uh, Pharmacy Program, and that's ongoing. Uh, healthcare workers, we've been working on that for the past few weeks, and we still have a few remaining, but we've gone through most of that. And again, we're ready to move into phase two. Phase two, uh, 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 next slide please. Phase two, we can break that down into the different groups there, which uh, for us, because it's pretty broad uh, and 
we do have the prerogative to break that down into, uh, into sub-categories, uh, and that's what, what we have done. And so the, the first tier is all of the remaining persons that are in phase one that have not been vaccinated uh, will, see, will still continue to uh, 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 vaccinate that group. Persons that are aged 65 or over are uh, uh, teachers, uh, K-12 teachers, custodians, drivers, and other staff, are uh, licensed child care workers, including custodians, drivers, and other staff, are uh, emergency services, fire and police, food and agriculture, which uh, include our grocery uh, stock workers, food processing, uh, meat uh, processing plants, and workers at our restaurants and bars. Next slide. And then there's the second tier, which will come after we uh, have um, gone through uh, uh, tier one. Again, we'll include all those in the previous uh, phases and the previous tiers that have not been vaccinated yet. It will include uh, workers in transportation and logistics. Next slide. It will include uh, persons in our congregate settings and residents and staff, and that include uh, homeless shelters, uh, corrections facilities, emergency shelters, adult care homes, and any re remaining senior living homes that has not been covered in other phases or covered through the uh, Federal Pharmacy Partnership Program. Next slide. And then th tier three, again, will include anyone that's missed in the previous phases and workers in our water wastewater facilities, U.S. Uh, Postal Service workers, uh, DMV, retail warehouses and sales outlets, and companies that are critical, uh, that, that supply critical supplies or materials for the COVID-19 response. And phase two is really what we're going to uh, try to focus on today. Next slide. It is um, a very important for uh, our residents to understand that um, uh, in spite of the, of the interest, uh, one, the critical limiting factor has been uh, the number of vaccine doses that we have. Uh, everything that we've received, we have distributed them, and we have given them out as soon as we have received them. We still have some uh, of our phase one members uh, that qualify for that phase that are, are yet to be vaccinated, and we'll continue to do that even as we move to phase two. Next slide. This is a very, very large group. I uh, uh, estimate we could have uh, around 150,000 persons here. Um, uh, in the county, there are over 95,000 uh, of our residents that are 65 or older. And uh, looking at the numbers of our educators, and child care facilities and other members of uh, phase two, that could be a very, very large group. And so it's very important for us that, to understand that it will take a while for us to get through this. Um, we are going to be vaccinating at the Department of Health and Environment Tuesdays through Fridays. We are partnering with our area, uh, uh, hospitals, health systems here, and health partnership clinic to uh, participate in this, uh, in this activity. Uh, obviously, if it's uh, only going through the uh, Department of Health and Environment, with the number of persons that we have to vaccinate, uh, that would take uh, a, a very long time. Next slide. And so I, I do want to uh, be clear that um, we are working with our uh, health systems, Olitha Health Center, um, Advent, uh, KU Med, St. Luke's, Adv and several other ones, Children's Mercy, are uh, participating in these processes. Um, uh, a, a lot of them are focusing on um, in, uh, population that are aged 65 and older. That's a very, very big group. I actually just saw the email that Olitha Health System had sent out to uh, their patients uh, who are in that age group, providing them information on uh, how to uh, 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 book and register to be vaccinated. I expect uh, the same information to start to flow out from the other health systems. And so again, uh, uh, it's very important for you to know that 
DHE, the Department of Health and Environment, is not the only place to get vaccinated and that we are going to be working with all of our partners. The goal again is to get the vaccine into the arms of as many people as possible as soon as we can. Uh, very soon, Ms. Hoshu is going to come up and uh, come, uh, uh, talk a little bit about our activities, working with the Children's Mercy. Uh, Children's Mercy is taking the lead in uh, vaccinating uh, our educators K-12, as well as, uh, as uh, child care uh, uh, establishment workers. And Health Partnership, which is our local uh, federally qualified uh, center, is also participating and focusing on some aspect of the food and agriculture category. Next slide. So if you are uh, eligible for phase two, we continue to encourage you to complete the vaccine interest survey. Uh, if you don't have uh, access to a computer, call 913-715-2819. Uh, uh, we will assist you in completing that. And uh, we also have the form in Spanish, and we also have people that will assist you in completing the form. If you are in phase one, based on the total number of doses that's available each week, we would uh, provide information on how to register and who can register. Uh, we'll follow up with information by email and possibly by phone that you provided to us. Again, if you have not registered and provided and provide us those information, please do, th do those. And all uh, of our information are shared on www.jokogov.org slash coronavirus. Next slide. All right, so I'll summarize and then Ms. Oshu would uh, talk a little bit about uh, the plans with the uh, Children Mercy. Is we are moving into phase two next week. Um, we don't have enough vaccines, we are receiving them in small amounts. Uh, but as, as, as soon as we receive them, we're giving them out. And so even though we are moving into phase two, understand that this is a very large group and, and we will need you to exercise patience because it will take us a while. And uh, some weeks we'll have a few more thousand uh, doses than others. And the number of appointment uh, slots that we open up will depend on how many vaccines that we have. And, and uh, clearly for now, if you are in tier one of phase two, expect that uh, between, uh, within the next few weeks, you will be getting uh, information as to how, to how to book an appointment to be vaccinated. Thank you. Ms. Osho. Good evening. Let me just echo what Dr. Ariola said. Um, I know that we're all exhausted from this pandemic. I know I am, our staff are, I know our residents are. This has probably been the hardest 10, 11 months that many of us have lived through. And at this point, we have this light at the end of the tunnel, but it is just coming way slower than any of us had hoped for. Um, we know everyone is anxious to get the vaccine. We are thrilled that there is as much interest for the vaccine as there is. And I think that this will be the turning point for our community. However, as you've heard repeatedly, we are just not getting the number of doses that we need to get them into the arms of all of our residents. So if I can just echo the ask that everybody continue to be patient. We, as soon as we're getting doses in our um, health department, we are roll, turning around and setting up vaccine clinics within days and getting those into people's arms. So we are moving as quickly as we possibly can based on what allocation we get. Um, unfortunately, it's just much less than what we would hope. However, we have a number of excellent community partnerships that have existed throughout this pandemic and before, but are really gonna come into fruition as we move to vaccinate larger swaths of our population. In particular, Children's Mercy, and as you may know, the two vaccines that are currently licensed, Pfizer is licensed for those 16 and older, and Moderna is licensed for those 18 and older, so really does not approach Children's Mercy's general population. So they have stepped forward and said that they are extremely interested in vaccinating those who are in directly involved in the care of children. And so they are really taking the lead for our K through 12 schools, um, both private and public, as well as our child care providers. And we've been working really extensively with all of these groups, um, the superintendents, our health service coordinators, our private schools, our child care providers, to 
really move forward in the most efficient way and the most equitable way to get as many vaccines as possible into those staff's arms because we know that they are critical to keeping our economy open, having kids in school is vital for mental health, and continually having to quarantine classrooms or individuals for positive uh, staff members or otherwise is, is definitely a burden for both the school system and our community. And so what this will look like is Children's Mercy is going to be setting up mobile clinics at high school locations or at various school buildings throughout the county. And we will be inviting various groups from all of the school districts and our private schools into those settings to receive their vaccine doses from Children's Mercy in partnership with us. Very similarly, we will be reaching out to all of the childcare providers. Um, a survey is going out, I believe, today to solicit the number of staff who are interested in obtaining the vaccine. And that way, we will have an understanding of how many um, childcare licensing providers, childcare providers we have, so that we can also get them in to immunize those individuals as well. And with that, thank you. Yes. And, and, and uh, on, the, on the PowerPoint, um, again, uh, you have access to um, information about where uh, we push out information on our webpage, um, uh, the daily COVID e-newsletter e that contains a lot of useful information, uh, uh, social media handles there, um, and um, uh, as, again, uh, hashtag uh, sleeve up Joko. If you get vaccinated, uh, we encourage you to um, to join us in the social media campaign. But we are we are providing um, uh, working again uh, with our communication group to continue to provide as uh, much information as quickly as we can. Obviously, uh, taking feedback and adjusting our uh, processes uh, based on those feedback. Thank you. Thanks, thanks to both of you. We do have some questions that have started to pop up from the media, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, unmute Kyle Palmer. And I see here you have several, so we're gonna keep you unmuted and you can go ahead and uh, ask your questions. Uh, yeah, thank you. Can you hear me? Just wanna make sure that's the case. We can hear you. Okay, great. Um, let me, yeah, I do have a long list of questions. Um, so I'm asking for our readers of the Shawnee Mission Post, if I'm 65 or older, um, who should I go ask about getting vaccinated? Should I ask my primary care provider? Should I ask my doctor? Um, where should I be going? Good. All right. So um, if you are 65 or older, again, that, that's a very, very large group. Um, there will be multiple providers here that includes your PCP that are associated with the large health system, some of which I've listed. And some of those are already reaching out to their patients. I know some of them have larger patients in that group than, than others. Uh, again, for us at the health department, uh, including next week, we are going to be making uh, announcements perhaps later tomorrow about uh, giving an opportunity for a subset, again, based on the number of vaccines that we have to, to register. Uh, and the providers with the uh, health systems, your PCP is always a good place to start. A lot of them are affiliated with the large providers. But also understand that uh, uh, a, a, the, your opportunity to get uh, vaccinated next week, the week after, depends on the supply of the vaccine. And, and we are in uh, constant touch with uh, uh, the large health system. We, we are coordinating. Uh, and, and, and ensuring that we are all on the same page. But uh, the, the first place to start is your PCP. But I know that many people are, if they've not started to receive the information or messaging from their health systems about how to prepare and sign up for this, they will be in, in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, can I or should I go to a, a pharmacy like Walgreens or CVS and ask about signing up to get vaccinated? And I guess this is for anybody, not just someone who's 65 or older. I, I am not. Uh, so the CVS and Walgreens were the two large pharmacy groups that were part of the um, Federal Pharmacy Partnership Pro Program. And their vaccination thus far have been targeted towards long-term care facilities or long-term care facilities as, uh, affiliated independent living. And uh, we, uh, 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 we are monitoring the numbers, 
both of them are still working through that group. A lot of them are pretty close to scheduling and finish to finishing scheduling the first dose. They will still have to go back and do the second dose. Their long-term participation in phase two is uh, the conversion is ongoing at the national and state level, but still unclear. Right now, if you go to CVS and Walgreens, um, unless you are part of the long-term care facilities, uh, uh, I don't think it would be a source for you uh, to get vaccinated. Not right now. Right. Um, do I have to get my vaccine in Johnson County if I'm a Johnson County resident? For instance, can I go to Kansas City, Missouri, or if I work across state lines, um, is that possible? I've also had readers ask me, can I just drive out to rural Kansas and attempt to get a vaccine where there is less demand? <laughs> I, 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 I'll tell you that the, uh, the issue with uh, vaccine availability is uh, not just across the state, it's, uh, it's nationwide. And um, while um, the instruction in Kansas is uh, we don't want any vaccine dose to be wasted, and so the goal is to get the vaccine into as many arms as possible as quickly as we can. Um, there are no rules against uh, getting vaccine from other, other counties, but I know that all of our colleagues are struggling to get uh, vaccines and they are planning for their population. And so I don't know how feasible or how successful that is, but there are no rules against that. Um, are there different alerts or lists that I can sign up for to be able to track when vaccines become available? What would you suggest um, residents do to be able to just keep in touch with all the latest developments? Right, I think uh, um, we, uh, uh, our communication team, um, we are looking at several, several ways of um, uh, increasing opportunities to disseminate information. We still have uh, showing on our PowerPoint. I don't know if that can be displayed. Again, uh, the places where you can get the information, uh, most of our information, we are talking through um, using those that are, uh, the information from those that have signed up, uh, 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 that have uh, completed our survey, pushing information to them. Another reason why, you should uh, go and complete the survey if you haven't. Uh, some have provided their email, we'll push things through. Some phone numbers, we'll push that through also. Uh, I don't know, Jody, if you want to add anything to that. I was just gonna, again, I know you've got it up on the screen, but just remind people that daily COVID e-newsletter has a lot of good information about vaccines, testing, and other COVID-related information. So if you, don't, if you aren't getting it yet, it's, it's free. It goes right to your inbox Monday through Friday, jococov.org slash COVID newsletter. Um, if I've taken the phase two survey, what can I expect to happen next? What kind of communication should I be on the lookout? Should I be on the lookout for? Uh, uh, so the completion of the survey, as we've made very clear from the beginning, uh, uh, is primarily to assist us in our planning purposes. However, it does offer additional uh, advantages for us and, and for you. For us, um, we're able to push information to you as they become available. Um, if we have um, appointment slots open, we'll let you know. And if you qualify for that, you're able to, to sign up, even though we are also pushing out the information through other, other, other means. But it does, again, allow you to get information as they become, become available. Um, sign up for that, and uh, uh, we'll do our best to push more information out to the public based on the emails and phone numbers that we have. And just to reiterate it, you're, filling out the survey is not reserving a place in line. Uh, it, it is not. It is very important to, to make that distinction. Uh, when you qualify, you'll be able to re we'll provide information on how to sign up, how, uh, how you need to reserve a spot and book a spot for yourself. It is not signing up to be vaccinated. Uh, if I'm in a phase two group, like a teacher or a grocery store worker, and I live in Johnson County, but work outside the county, should I aim to get vaccinated in Johnson County or should I pursue vaccination options where I work? Uh, if, you are a, if you are a resident of Johnson County or work in Johnson County, you're qualified for the vaccine. 
I will also chime in that because the K through 12 um, vaccination clinics are going to be very directed through the actual schools themselves, and they will be the ones really orchestrating the, the tiers within their school staff, that um, if they are a teacher in another county or another um, state, that they should certainly inquire from their um, administration if they can get vaccinated. And I do know from some individuals uh, that they are vaccinating some teachers over in Missouri. So if that is the case, they may have an opportunity there. No, my wife will like to know that. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, will uh, residents have to provide some proof of any sort when they meet eligibility criteria to get vaccinated, say if they're a teacher or a restaurant worker? I mean, will they have to provide some kind of proof that they work in that industry? Or once they, you kind of get cleared to back, get vaccinated, it's, it's a done deal? In general, yes. I suspect, for example, if you are qualifying based on age, uh, your ID will suffice in that case. And what we have done with the healthcare worker is really uh, give us an uh, in, um, something to show that you work in the healthcare industry. And that, that will, again, uh, once we get more, uh, once we, we, the vaccine become more available, then those will not be as important as it is now. Because again, the goal remains to get the vaccine into the arms of as many people as possible as quickly as we can. And final question, I appreciate you answering all my questions. Um, Dr. Ariola, you uh, indicated earlier today during the BOCC meeting that um, you were waiting on another round of vaccines from KDHE. I can't remember the exact number, something around 6,800 potentially coming in which would, was going to be critical to you finishing up phase one. Have you received that round of vaccines? Um, and, and if so, when will you administer them? We received um, 6,825 doses uh, earlier today. And so uh, our, our clinic is open tomorrow, and our clinics will be open Tuesday to Friday next week. And the clinics next week would include a continuation of vaccine, of va provision of vaccines for healthcare workers. And we will begin phase two, we'll open up slots for um, uh, people in tier one of the phase two. Again, as we, we've broken that down, our priority in that group right now are people that are 65 or older. The uh, educators K through 12 and childcare facilities are being planned through Children Mercy. Uh, the, uh, again, our other our health systems are going to be helping us out with the 65 plus, but the slots that are open next week will be targeted towards the, uh, those that are 65 or, or older. It will not be many, but um, uh, compared to where we were before, that's uh, pretty good news. So phase two could begin as early as Tuesday? It will begin on Tuesday. It will begin. Well, thank you very much, Jody. I'm, I have all, gotten through all my questions. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Kyle. Okay, next we have Jackson at KMBC TV. We're going to unmute you, Jackson, and you can go ahead and ask your questions. All righty. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Well, he answered many of my questions. Um, uh, as of tonight, do we know how many people uh, in Johnson County has signed up uh, on the survey or filled out the survey? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we have gone through and there are about 45,000 uh, individuals um, who completed the survey. We've taken out all the duplicates and we know that at the beginning there were a lot of issues with the server. Um, so it's really paring down all of those sort of um, incomplete surveys looks to be about 40 to 45,000 individuals. Uh, and we probably should add that um, if uh, some of the uh, incomplete service. If we have contact information, we'll reach out to them to try to get them complete. Complete. Sorry. And we are also currently working on sending a an email out to all of those who have uh, we got completed information. So we'll be trying to reach back out to those individuals to 
assure them that they, we did receive their information or if we don't have complete information, we'll also be trying to reach out to those individuals to ensure we get as many people to visit the survey as possible. And if you did fill out a survey and you're wondering whether or not it works, it worked when you did it, if you got to the end of the survey and it said, thank you for completing our survey, then you're good to go when we have that information. If you filled it out and you never saw that page, then go ahead and jump back on our survey and fill it out again, because that means that that was not completely um, pushed through to us. And then I know we're still waiting for those mo more doses to come uh, to us, but um, do we, will we have enough people to administer the vaccine uh, once it uh, arrives? We do have enough people to do it. Uh, uh, I do want to emphasize that uh, our biggest um, strength here is the collaboration with our providers. Um, we are using the same group of people that, uh, that have been working countless hours since March. And so uh, we have to take that into consideration. But your question is, are we uh, able to ramp up and give more vaccine uh, uh, if we need to? The, the quick answer to that is yes. But uh, Department of Health and Environment alone, if we have to do it, that would be a very slow process. That's why the collaboration with our health systems Again, earlier today, I just read the what Oleta Health had pushed out to their patients, and, and that's the plan. They have already provided information to them on how to register, and once they get vaccine, they are good to go. So this has to be the public health system vaccinating, not just the Department of Health and Environment. We have been monitoring people who are watching on Facebook, and so while we're waiting to see if there's any more questions from the media, I was just going to give you a few of those. Yeah. Um, so yeah. one question is, is asking about the prioritiz prioritization of different groups of people. So someone was wondering, it, it seems to them that maybe somebody uh, who is healthy but older is being prioritized over someone with a chronic medical condition. So just what is the thought process in, in how people are prioritized for vaccines? I, I'll start, and um, Elizabeth, please jump in. Um, so the, the fundamental premise to, for prioritization is just to uh, put a, a method to that, understanding this is about a third of our population, or may, maybe slightly more, uh, uh, for those that are able to take the vaccine. And so we also know that uh, we don't have all the vaccines that we need, and that even if we have the vaccine, it's gonna take a while, and you're going to have to find a way to, to prioritize. Uh, the, the questions and requests that we get from people that, hey, we're in phase three, we should be in phase two. We're in tier three, we should be in tier one. If we end up putting all of our residents in phase two, then we might be in phase two for <laughs> the next few months. So the overall uh, premise here is to give us time, spread it, spread it out into manageable chunks so that uh, uh, we are able to do this at a pace that is realistic. Now, uh, in theory, it is possible that somebody is 65 and not quite as healthy as somebody who is 60 or 61. Um, the, the, the idea, though, between phase one and phase two, we didn't make that decision. The state made that decision to say if you are 65 plus. Now, that's consistent with the data that we have. And that's why I said that this bear should jump in. A lot of our uh, more serious adverse consequences I'll call in older population. This is our most vulnerable population. And does it mean that there are people that are younger that are not adversely impacted? No, you are going to have those cases there. But that's the overall premise between the 65 plus being uh, in, in, in the higher category of phase two. Yeah, and just to follow up on that, when we think about um, you know who is most adversely affected by COVID-19, um, who's at the most risk for death or for severe outcomes with this, it really is our oldest population. And then that declines as individuals get younger. And once we get below about age 60, then it really does become an issue predominantly of pre-existing conditions. And so that's why um, if you look at KDHE's website about the vaccine phases or the um, document that um, Dr. Ariola showed, when we get into phases three and four, those 16 to 64 with the various pre-existing conditions are put into those um, phases per KDHE and per the state of Kansas. 
And that's even prioritized based on what we know about this disease and what pre-existing conditions actually predisposes an individual to a more severe outcome from COVID-19 infection. Um, and so really that's how um, the federal government, um, ACIP, CDC, and KDHE have all prioritized. Um, and so we are following KDHE and the state of Kansas's prioritization. And we'll just combine a couple questions that are sort of in the same area, and then I think we will close uh, this event. Uh, so just some logistical questions about, um, and you might have already said this, but maybe just remind people, um, how are we handling people who are in phase one that still need a vaccine, as well as people who need their second dose? Just talk through some of those logistics, please. Yeah, um, uh, thank you. That, that's a, a very important uh, clarification that I was hoping uh, we're able to make. Um, if, you, uh, if, you're, if you're in phase one, every time that we open up uh, appointment slots and you qualify, qualify for phase one, please book an appointment. We would vaccinate you. If you, uh, uh, when, after you receive your first dose, you'll receive a card. And in, on that card is when your second dose is due. It's typically three weeks uh, for the fi uh, Pfizer and four weeks after the first dose for Moderna. It will be on your card. Again, use the same process. When it's time for you, book an appointment, on one of those slots and you'll get vaccinated. In all cases, we want everyone to book an appointment. And, and, and where we are planning for the week, we're opening up slots, understanding the number of people that are due for their second doses uh, that week. So in both cases, book an appointment. And then just real quick, I saw Jackson at KMBC had his hand raised still in Zoom. I didn't know if you had additional questions. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, this kind of ties into two, two questions. Uh, forgive me, it may have been answered as well. If I don't, if I am over, if I am in phase two, I don't have a PCP, um, what do I do? Um, and if I have a PCP that is out of, I live in Kansas, um, but my PCP is in Missouri, uh, what do I do as well? So those, those two there. In, in both of those cases, you book an appointment to get vaccinated at the Department of Health and Environment when we have slots available. Thank you. I am not seeing any additional questions from the media. I want to thank the media so much that attended this and asked questions. and participated. I want to thank the people who are watching on Facebook for being engaged on this topic. And thank you so much to Dr. Ariola and Elizabeth and all the staff that helped put this together. We'll be doing more of these. So stay tuned and have a great evening.